I am honored to introduce you to Nancy Wagner. Nancy was wrongfully convicted of the murder of her beloved daughter, Sarah. Nancy spent 30 years in prison before she was able to demonstrate through scientific evidence that Sarah's death was a tragic accident. In this way, Nancy's wrongful conviction was actually very similar to that of so many other wrongfully convicted women who were convicted of harming their children when no crime, in fact, had occurred. Nancy was freed in 2020, and her conviction was overturned this year. Rather than face another trial where she would have to trust a system that had failed her, Nancy chose closure through what's called an Alford plea, ending the case while still maintaining her innocence. Speaking tonight is not easy for Nancy. She does not seek attention, and she does not relish the spotlight. But her experience is so important for us to hear, and I am grateful that she is willing to share it. So please, help me welcome Nancy Wagner to the stage. Hi. I was in my cell. Hi, Ange. In Framingham Prison with my dog, Cappy, a beautiful black lab. I was part of the NEEDS program that trained service dogs for disabled people. And I was chosen because I stayed out of trouble and I minded my business. When a CO came to my door and told me I had to go with him and that I couldn't take my dog with me. So I gave my dog to my next door neighbor and he walked me down to admissions, which is where you come to prison or where you leave prison. He locked me in the cell and walked away. I had no idea what was going on I was there for the first couple hours, I was quiet, and then I started banging on the door, and they, they wouldn't even look at me, they totally ignored me, and they brought my roommate down and put her in the cell next to me, and we started talking, and all of a sudden they started yelling that we couldn't say anything to each other, so they moved her three cells down. So at this point, I'm terrified. I have no idea what's going on. And they have what's called inmate runners, where inmates work in different parts of the prison. And so an inmate runner came down, and when the COs weren't looking, she told me, they're tearing apart your cell. Your stuff's thrown out in the hallway. There's a CO sitting in front of your door taking notes on whoever's going in and out of your room. And I was petrified. So I, I reached a point where I thought they were shipping me out to another state. And I was scared I would never see my family, my friends, my dog. And after four or five hours, I accepted it. I wasn't getting any answers. And I actually wanted to go to get out of that cell. Um, so at, at five hours, they opened my cell door and told me to go back to my unit. And I was in shock. I went back to my unit. I looked in the hallway and all my stuff thrown in the hallway, all my clothes. And I go in my room, the ceiling's ripped down, pages are torn out of my address book, my books, my cosmetics spilled all over the place. It was a disaster. Everything I owned was basically destroyed. So I started putting everything back together and I noticed that the chain that my sister had gotten me years ago was missing. I went to the CO and told him, and he told me that it was in property, to go to property to get it. So I walked to property, I get my necklace, and I was so upset, I was crying. I, I just didn't understand why they did this to me. This wasn't a normal cell toss. I decided to go to the DOS's office, which is the director of security, and ask him why. So I walked to his office, knocked on the door, he told me I could come in, and it's a huge office, wall-to-wall -wall rug, big desk, and I asked him, you know, why did you tear apart my cell like that? And he told me that it was a drill, that the COs didn't even know it was a drill. They thought it was real. 
The only ones that did were the ones down in missions and they were told to just act like I wasn't there. And he apologized to me. And I was still so upset that everything I owned, everything, it was just terrifying. And he apologized to me. And that was the only apology I've ever gotten. Five years later, I walked out of that same cell and I always remember that day. The lack of control, lack of power I had. And that's why today I'm so grateful that I can go to the store and buy what I want. I can live where I want to live. And I can simply just walk down the street if I want to. That's it.